Germany was impoverished and in bad shape, but America, on the other hand, was promising and bright. However, the decision to immigrate was still hard. In Germany, we had a farm, we had a house, we had a life here. But in America, there was fertile farmland, and lots of it. In Germany, 1830, our farm here was dying from bad soil quality, so growing became hard, and the harvest became smaller and smaller each year. And the land around us wasn't getting any better with the amount of people overpopulating the land. In America, land was fertile and cheap, perfect for us and our crops. Some states were already welcoming us Germans, some of the states up in the north. The one we were headed to was Michigan. We were going to take a ship there and take the Transcontinental Railroad to Michigan himself. So we packed all our money and some stalks and potato sprouts and left our farm behind and headed for America. Like the rest of farmers seeking land in America, we left at the southwest border. The boat we took was dirty, and the sea was terrible. I constantly thought the, that the boat would sink, but I was assured that everyone thought that on their first trip on boat. But still, I was worried. Around halfway through the trip, we, everyone became scared. Very scared. A disease had spread around the ship, and a cold wind had started blowing. The sea became unrelenting, and waves constantly splashed onto the deck of the ship. Everyone on the ships all said that they were feeling chills and shivers, especially at night. But some weren't as lucky to have such light symptoms. Some were reported to have hypothermia. Those, were, those with diseases were given blankets and comforted. Suddenly, the seemingly peaceful trip had became riddled with disease and worry. Everyone on the ship knew that death was only soon to come. One day, I remember it the best, the sky was gray and a dense fog had rolled over the ship be before Manny had woke up. I groggily sat up, looking around at the bundled body shielding from the ocean wind that had diseased Manny. Hypothermia had swept across the ship, and friend families did everything they could to keep warm. The humidity in the air and the cold wind made it so breathing chilled your insides and made your muscles tense up. Suddenly, a scream rang out throughout the ship, followed by audible sobbing. Today was the day everyone feared. Today was the day the first person died. A hush fell over the entire half of the ship. No one knew how to react to a tragedy. Everyone wanted to give sympathy and comfort to the family of the dead, but everyone knew it very much could have been himself, limp and lifeless. Someone coughed and spat phlegm onto the deck of the ship, breaking the empty silence and reminding everyone the worst wasn't in the past yet. After the first death, everyone became taking even more care of themselves and their families. We were only 17 days into our voyage, just a little over half of our, of our expected, and a quarter of the people on board were sick or dying. Adding on to hypothermia, a case of cholera had been spreading across the decks. The extremely infectious disease had already claimed quite a large portion of the crew, and those still struggling against it were using up a worrisome amount of drinkable water on the ship. The captain made a system where everyone was given two quarts of water every day, that was hardly enough for those with cholera, for they were almost constantly having diarrhea, making them dehydrated and sick. Every day, they became even more sickly, some of them going beyond help. At first, most of everyone agreed to reserve one room for the dead, so they could receive a proper burial when we hit land. But the room had been filling up drastically with an unbearable stench. We, we needed a way to relieve the amount of bodies, so we threw some of the dead overboard with their family's permission. However, the problem wasn't completely solved. The bodies may have been gone, but the stench remained. It looked like halfway through the trip, we we're going to have to deal with the stench the rest of the trip. The most dreadful day on the entire trip was only a few days later. It was the 24th day on the open sea, but there was a steady pour of water coming down. My throat was hurting and swollen, and my sinuses were stuffed. The entire ship was full of a course of coughing, a hurtful song. The amount of dead kept from rising and rising from cholera and hypothermia. I had a small fever, so whenever the ice-cold rain hit my head, I could imagine it sizzling into vapor. The crew on the ship had stopped trying to cure diseases and started keeping the well alive, alive. It was painful watching the coughing and the puking of the sick, the, the most we did for them was give them small amounts of water and wet rags to try to calm the pain. The hopeful beginning of a journey was becoming a nightmare. Finally, 
after 34 grueling days out at sea, being tossed around at sea, seeing enough death for a lifetime, we spotted land. It was America, land of promise and freedom. Finally, we had reached the destination of our dreams. When we got to land, we let down our bridge. The sound of a wooden board hitting dry wood was the best sound we heard in the entire month.